Howdy Space Rangers, Captain Phoenix here with another Star Wars video. Now you can see that the title Clone Wars is on front of the video. And you know, I decided to do another theory video today. So I said the Clone Wars title is here, but actually this video was meant to encompass like the entire Star Wars franchise. I mean, okay, how do I explain? The theory itself stems from the Clone Wars video, but the but like you know it circles around the entire franchise it starts from the clone wars and then it like goes around the franchise like basically they are hand in hand i i had no better way of phrasing that i'm good in english so today i thought i would do a star wars theory and don't worry don't worry the podcast for which star wars like for how Star Wars has been ruined by Disney, but still redeemable, or maybe not ruined by Disney, is still coming out. I am making that podcast, and I just want it to be good. The reason I haven't done it sooner is because A, I've been lazy, and B, is actually, I've been working a lot on it. Yeah, that's right, I've been lazy and working a lot on it at the same time. I really want it to be a good video. I want it to be a really good video, so that before star wars celebration i at least leave my mark on the place so i just want you to know that before star wars celebration i am going to release the videos that it won't have anything to do with star wars and hopefully to be the last video i put out before star wars celebration because that's the last star wars video i want to do before the episode 9 trailer because tomorrow i'm gonna go see shazam so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna do the podcast um video i hope it's still liking then after that i'll go I'll do my Shazam review. And then I said I don't want to do any more Star Wars video other than the episode 9 trailer reaction. I give my thoughts on it. Anyways, other than that, let's get into the theory. So this theory is called How the Physical Aspects of the Force Represent the Star Wars Story. Now you're probably wondering, excuse me, what? Well, this is where Clone Wars comes in, like originating the theory. So to those of you who don't know what Clone Wars is, shame on you by the way, it's a great series. It's, you know, basically a series that takes place in between episode 2 and 3, as said the Clone Wars. And we just get to see the anthology stuff, like we get to see things taking in between places, we could have crazy things happen to our characters, as long as the things that happen in the movie that comes after the series, for like say, it's, let, okay, see it's between episode 2 and 3, so as long as the things in episode 3 remain intact, then the Clone Wars can do whatever it wants. It, can, it can't kill Anakin for sure, but it can definitely kill somebody like Ahsoka. It can do that. But as long as nothing about the show changes anything in Episode 3, it would be good. That's what an anthology is. It doesn't change anything that you're putting in between the story. Anyway, so let me explain the story to you. So this story comes from Clone Wars Season 3. Um, I forgot what the episode was called, mainly because they didn't give me the name. Yeah, that's right. I was searching through like the name of the series. I didn't find the name of the episode. So you guys are going to have to forgive me on that one. So yeah, the episode, I don't know its name. But it does, it is a story arc in season 3. And it goes for about 3 episodes. My favorite being the first episode. Yes, my favorite episode of a saga isn't the last one. As you know, you as you know, guys, I love conclusions. But for the first time ever, I actually like the first thing that came in here. The first episode is my favorite of the series, followed by the third one and then the second one. The second one I didn't... No, did I find the second one interesting? Ah, oh, no, I found all of them interesting. I love them all. Anyway, so here's how the story went by. We have Anakin, Obi-Wan, and Ahsoka all going on a ship to meet Ka Captain Rex because apparently there's some Jedi text that's been used that hasn't been used in 2,000 years. Mind you, 2,000 years ago, at least speaking in Star Wars terms, was when the Jedi were created. So that thing is ancient. So they went to go look for where the origin of the texts were. How they, however, got sucked into a planet apparently where only Force users can get sucked into. Like, no one else can get there. So if you're a Force user, only you would be able to go into the planet. And the planet's this sort of weird prison ship thing. It doesn't look more of a planet more than it does, like, a giant prison version of Thanos' ship. I don't know why I brought that up. Anyway, so they get inside the prison and then they find out this weird place that changes with night and day. During the day, everything is, you know, nice, colorized, beautiful, pretty, oh, cool. And at night time, it's dark, angsty, lightning everywhere. 
and so now we get to meet these three characters and these three characters are the only inhabitants of this planet we have the father who's the balance the daughter who's the light and the son who's the dark so these guys represent the force the father is the balance of the force the person trying to make sure that everything is in order he's constantly fighting with his children the daughter is the light of the force she's a light side you know the, basically you could say she's um the goddess of the Jedi, I guess. And then we have the sun, who's the dark side, goddess of the Sith, I guess, in this case. And both of these guys are trying to battle for supremacy, but their father is the only guy who can keep them down. If they, like, go out of work, they might just break the very essence of the universe. If the daughter escapes, there'll be too much light. Balance will be thrown out of order. If the sun escapes, then darkness will consume the universe. It's a very stable thing and the father does play a big part in this. And so that's why he built the planet. I would say like the planet is manufactured by the father, I guess, to keep um, his children in. It's the only thing stopping them from escaping. So, um, we ha that was part one. Part one was basically where we get introduced to the aspects of the Force. And the father wants to know if Anakin is the chosen one. So as we know, Anakin is the chosen one, the guy meant to bring balance to the Force. So he gives Anakin a test. He's like, yo, I've told my children to kill your master and your apprentice. Who will you save? You can only save one. Anakin, through like a visually cool, like, I'm, I swear that was some of the best animation I've ever seen, visually cool representation of the Force, saves both of them at the same time and so they're like and so now the father finally determined that anakin is the chosen one and he's like bro man you're the chosen one and so since anakin was destined to bring balance to the force the father tells anakin that it's his destiny to stay on the planet mortis with his son and daughter because since since anakin is basically on the same power level as the father Anakin will have to take up the mantle as being the new balance. So once the father dies, Anakin will become the new father and try and hold darkness and light in place in order for balance to stay intact. However, Anakin refuses and the father tells Anakin that if you leave this place, you will be haunted forever. You do not receive my blessing. So Anakin is now stuck in a dilemma because he doesn't know whether to leave or not. That brings us to the end of part one. Part two, we basically have where the son kidnaps Ahsoka and takes him to his side of the planet. His side of the planet is, you know, covered in darkness. And so Anakin and Obi-Wan go to rescue Ahsoka and Obi-Wan goes to the light side, the, the daughter. The daughter takes him to an underground cavern under the father's... I should say palace so she takes obi-wan to the underground cavern of the father's palace and gives him a sword so this sword is the only thing that can damage the force wielders they call themselves the force wielders the father daughter and son so this sword is the only thing that can damage the force wielders and the reason she's giving it to obi-wan is because the son attacked the father waiting for him to die so that he could be the dominant power so she gives the sword to obi-wan telling him that he has to go and kill the son. So Obi-Wan goes and he tries to kill the son, however it fails and Ahsoka is turned evil by the son. So Anakin and Obi-Wan versus Ahsoka, pretty cool fight and the daughter and son also have their own cool fight. But just before things go haywire, the father comes in, breaks up the fight and even like breaks up the fight between Ahsoka and Anakin and Obi-Wan. However, the son comes and kills Ahsoka and so now he accidentally kills his sister. How did it go again? Um, right, 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 yeah, yeah. He took the dagger and was about to kill his father, but his sister jumped in the way and she died. So now the light side of the force has, uh, has now died and the planet is basically now being controlled by darkness. And, you know, the father contributes to both light and dark, so he doesn't know what to do now that one of his children is dead. And his son flees. So now... Um, Anakin asks the father to save Ahsoka. The father is like, I can't do, I can't undo what has been done. So, you know, he, what, how's this? He uses the force. Now the father tells him how to use the force. And in another visually appealing scene, Anakin brings the force from the daughter to Ahsoka, like the remaining living light force from the daughter to Ahsoka, thus making her live. And on top of that, um, that's where the episode ends, bringing us to the next one where the guys try to get off the planet. However, the son now talks to Anakin and even shows Anakin the future of where Anakin turns into Vader, Order 66, killing Padme, all that nonsense. So Anakin has now turned evil and he's joining the son to help get the son out of there because the son promised him freedom. However, before they escape, um, the father erases Anakin's mind, then they go to stop the son together. The son 
um, takes the dagger and is about to kill the father but the father decides that now would be the best time to kill himself so the father kills himself thus releasing the son of his power so the son has no power whatsoever and go away go away so the son has no power whatsoever and with that Anakin is able to strike him down. The father tells Anakin that he has his blessing to leave for he has been able to restore planet balance to the planet and with that he will be able to restore balance to the galaxy. All in all those are some of my favorite episodes from the Clone Wars. It took me 10 minutes just to recap all those episodes to you. I am so sorry guys. I didn't mean to. I have a talking problem. I should probably get rid of the first 10 minutes, shouldn't I? Guy. Oh boy, I feel so sorry. Guy, I'm so sorry, guys. I did not mean for it to go this long. Alright, let me give my theory so that it's over quick. So, my theory is that all the events that played during those three episodes that you should definitely go watch are actually the things that happen in real life Star Wars. And I'm not, and I'm not saying like, oh, they are false ghosts or oh, it's symbolic. I actually mean literally happening. Like the spirits from Mortis, the force wielders from Mortis are able to like occupy the bodies of the Star Wars characters how is this let me give how each character represents who Luke is basically now another physical embodiment of the father Ahsoka is the daughter and the son is Anakin how well when the daughter died she gave the living light force in her to Ahsoka so therefore Ahsoka now has the daughter's um, light force meaning she has a spirit and it was even how should I say it was even um, what's this? It was even said in Rebels. Confirmed. That was it. It was even confirmed in Rebels that Ahsoka was the daughter, seeing as she had a connection with the daughter's spirit animal thing, friend. And the son, I would say, is Anakin. The son in the show gets slowly consumed by the dark side, and that's what ha happens to Anakin. He gets consumed by the dark side so much he's lost his path. So that's what I feel is Anakin's side. And the father is Luke. Luke is the one who brought balance. And by sacrificing himself, he didn't really die. But he did give up his life to save Anakin. Anakin in the end is the one who died by killing the Emperor. But by Luke having that spirit of self-sacrifice, was able to save his father and bring balance to the Force. Now, how would this all play out? Well, let's start with the son. Let's start with Anakin. Anakin turns into Vader he slowly gets accepted into the dark side and becomes Vader so once he becomes Vader he just just goes evil and you know he's lost and he only gets turned around by his son so once Anakin dies the dark side of the cosmic force leaves him so the spirit of the sun and the darkness leaves him to go join the cosmic force it's no longer part of a living force meaning the galaxy has no dark side in it there's no more Sith there's no more evil force users it's just it's now light and that's where I think Ahsoka would come in so personally I think Ahsoka would die before Anakin therefore that's why the darkness would rule for a longer time I'm not doing very well at this so let me explain so Ahsoka is the daughter and the last time we saw her was at the end of Rebels and okay no sorry she doesn't die before Anakin she dies after Anakin I just remembered she shows up after Return of the Jedi damn it anyway <sighs> I'm not doing so well am I so once Anakin dies the darkness goes into I guess the the cosmic force and is no longer part of the living galaxy meaning the galaxy is now only consumed by light and then here's my theory my theory is so at the end of rebels ahsoka and sabine go to look for ezra my theory is that either whether or not they find ezra ahsoka herself decides to die so instead of dying in a big lightsaber battle she actually meditates she goes into a, into a powerful force area you know an area just charged with the force she sits there meditates meditates for a long time until her robes well i mean until her body disappears leaving her robes alone. Ahsoka now becomes one with the cosmic force. And that's how I feel her end would be, to be such a satisfying end to the character. A character that we've been for so many years would be such a perfect end for her. She goes to a corner, sits down, meditates on the force deeply enough, and soon disappears, becoming one with the cosmic force, and therefore, the spirit of the daughter joins the sun. Now, that now the spirit of the daughter has joined the sun meaning the light side of the force in the galaxy is no longer present meaning the galaxy is now a vacuum of nothing we don't have dark we don't have light except for luke and luke is the father in my opinion because 
He brought Veda back to the light. He was able to save Veda from the darkness and bring him back to the light. And while I can't say he met Ahsoka, both of them were going for the same goal, except Ahsoka wasn't a Jedi anymore. Luke was the middle man. He was the guy in the middle. He saved his father from the darkness, and Ahsoka was able to be pure light while Luke was just finding his way. Luke was the father because he was trying to find balance between the two parties. He was trying to find balance between Anakin and Vader. And by saving him in the end, Luke had brought balance to not only the living force, but the cosmic force. Now, the cosmic force didn't have the balance in it, seeing as Luke was still alive. But while he was in the living force, the galaxy was able to be in balance for the next 30 years. However, the First Order rose and Kylo Ren was born, which brings me to where now you have the sequel trilogy. So the sequel trilogy, I wouldn't say undo, undoes my theory. If anything, it might lengthen it. I wouldn't say strengthen it, but it does give it another point of view to look at it from. So we have where the Force family of, you know, the, the physical representatives and while Luke was alive, the galaxy seemed, the living galaxy now, <laughs> seemed to find himself unbalanced. There was no light or dark left. Therefore, we had, therefore, the Sith were dead and the Jedi were returning. So it needed a way to stabilize itself. Thus, we had the birth of Kylo Ren and of Rey. So of Rey, the, so Rey now was injected with the spirit of the light. Rey was now the new living embodiment of the daughter. Rey was now the light side and Kylo Ren was born of the living embodiment of the darkness. Both are tortured from the opposing sides. Rey is tortured by the darkness and Kylo is tortured by the light. Both of them don't know how to go through this and they're both struggling with each other. But that just makes the chemistry more endearing. Seeing as Rey is the physical embodiment of the light, she still can't leave dark alone. Kylo is the physical embodiment of dark but he can't leave light alone. None can survive without the other, which is why the galaxy is now being brought again into balance. The cosmic force is in balance, but the living force is not, which is why the balance, Luke, goes into hiding and lets the light and dark rule in the galaxy. So, his children recovered on the galaxy, trying to seize control and supremacy. Light wants to have too much good, darkness wants to have too much bad, but they need to be a, a stand a middle ground. So when Luke dies, balance is restored in the cosmic force. Once he dies, he joins the spirit of the light and the dark. Luke is now one with the cosmic force because he is the father. Once Luke dies, he joins the cosmic force and becomes one. Now light, dark and the cosmic and the balance are now all one with the cosmic force and the cosmic force has balance. There is no more fighting. There is no more arguing. All has been restored. The only place where there's a vacuum is the living force. And that's what needs to be resolved in episode 9. So wherever Disney is going to go with this, it better end with some good happy ending. So while Luke goes into the cosmic force, it is officially balanced. The only thing that needs to be balanced is the living force. But that one seems to be on auto drive from there on. So while the living force is mending in the end, all will be subdued while the force, light and dark die and a new medium of both is restored. So either that Rey and Kylo both die in episode 9 or they both live but they find a new medium. They destroy the ways of the Jedi and the Sith. That way it will be subverting our expectations while at the same time bringing something new to the Star Wars universe. What if in episode 9 Rey and Kylo finally abolish all the Jedi all the Sith beliefs and begin a new medium where both light and dark share, where both share the same attributes, well I wouldn't say attributes, but they both share attributes of their own kind and helping them move forward as a galaxy. Instead of having a war cycle, they will go over and over again. Skywalker was meant to be the chosen one to restore the balance. Anakin did restore the balance by coming back to Anakin and releasing the darkness from the living force. However, I feel like it will be Luke who finally does this. His death at the end of episode 8 is what brought balance to the cosmic force. And by having the cosmic force have more balance, the living force was able to come in as well. On, as if it was an autopilot. It would just follow the cosmic force like that. Whew! 
that was a lot of good English and um, sentimentality. That is just a theory of mine, guys. Don't take it as official, but I thought it would be a good theory to share with you. So tomorrow I will do my podcast. I hope it's a really good podcast for you guys to enjoy. And I want to do it before Star Wars Celebration so that I don't talk about it during Star Wars Celebration and I don't get on anyone's nerves. Then once the Shazam, then, then once my Shazam review comes out, I will also, you know, um, talk about the Episode 9 trailer. Assuming it's released. And, you know, we'll talk about all the other stuff such as Clone Wars Season 7 and whatnot. Anyway, because that's been my theory about light and dark and how they can be balanced and how the Clone Wars actually is the entire Star Wars franchise. Not symbolically, but literally. I have been Captain Phoenix and I will see you in another universe.